In quantum atom theory, electromagnetic radiation creates Einstein's curvature of space-time, creating the gravitational force. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, everything is radiating electromagnetic radiation continuously, creating a chain reaction that is called stimulated emissions. Everything is radiating light spheres of quantized wave fronts, and when the wave fronts of two spheres come in contact, we will have destructive interference and the wave fronts out of phase will cancel each other out. There will also be constructive interference between the wave fronts that are in phase and they will superimpose or amplify. The radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an unbalanced force and the two objects will resonate together in a process known as gravity. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects, and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. Therefore the greater the mass of atoms, the stronger the gravitational force the gravitational field will propagate at the same speed that electromagnetic radiation moves, the speed of light. Therefore, there is no instantaneous action at a distance. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus, the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. In this diagram, a candle is at each end of a rotating mechanism. When the mechanism is rotated, the force will cause the candle flames to lean in towards the center of the force. In quantum atom theory, this is because of destructive and constructive interference between the radiating flames and the radiating energy of the force. The flames are attracted towards the center of the energy source in just the same way that the moon is attracted to the center of mass of the earth. In quantum atom theory the light spheres of electromagnetic radiation that create the gravitational fields that hold the planets in motion around the sun are also the same light spheres that we have in quantum physics. These light spheres are a mathematical quantity known as the wave function that creates the probability of the uncertainty principle. It is this wave function that continuously creates Einstein's curvature of space-time at the quantum level of the atoms. Each atom will radiate out light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Each expanding wave front will create a probability of a future event. When a wave function comes in contact with another atom, the wave particle duality of the light will collapse. This will create a new quantum particle in space and a new moment in time that will be part of the curvature of space-time. The wave function represents the time continuum at the most fundamental level. The probability of the uncertainty principle is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. This is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. The best way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. The light will expand in all possible directions as a wave particle function of quantized wave fronts. When the wave function reaches the screen with the two slits, the photons will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits 
as two light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the wave waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments of time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. This is because to observe the photon, we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wavefront into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. However insane this sounds, it can explain all the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. We have entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wavefront. The wavefront will expand at a quantum wave particle function in the form of a light sphere and the polarization will remain the same for the entire surface of the light sphere no matter how large it becomes. Each wavefront will be quantized at the level of the Planck constant and will collapse into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in time and space that never existed before the wave function collapsed because each atom is creating its own space-time at the same rate that light moves, the expanding wave function of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. This theory is very simple, but I think it is also very beautiful. We have free will to create our own future within a dynamically evolving universe of Einstein, and quantum mechanics and classical mechanics of Newton are united.